beautiful parable, the vine and the vine grower and where the, where the branch is attached to the, to the vine and we have to remain attached because we can easily be broken off through grave sin. We want to remain attached to the vine and live in me, as Jesus said. L live in me. To live in Jesus, what does that mean? To live in Jesus, of course we know. It starts with baptism. Then we are in Jesus. Uh, how far are we in Jesus, you know? Uh, we, you know, like uh, consider it a house. Are we just like at the entrance of the house? Are we just in the sort of the breezeway? Are uh, we just in the vestibule or the beginning, the entrance to the house? And we're just staying there. You know, we can kind of easily step outside the house if that's just where we are. We're satisfied with just being Christians, Catholics, maybe satisfied with just coming to Sunday Mass, maybe just satisfied with the minimum. That's kind of a little dangerous, isn't it, to be just at the entrance. We want to go into the house. We want to go into the living room and live and sit down with the family and love the family, the family members with our, our parents, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Mother, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We want to be sitting down in that loving atmosphere in that family. We want to be in the inside, uh, the inner sanctum, maybe in the kitchen, maybe in the kitchen, eating the, the bread of life, the Eucharist getting stronger at the kitchen table with the family. That's kind of a, an inner place to be. Um, how do we get there? How do we get inside God and Jesus? How do we remain in Jesus? That's the, really the important thing. Remain in Jesus, we have to do his will, right? We have to do what he wants us to do. We have to, you know, maybe say we, uh, we need to be making our parents happy, making Jesus happy, making the Father happy, meaning doing what pleases him, doing what he wants us to do all the time, all the time. And you can experience that or yourself, or ourselves, myself. If we are like, uh, you know, what's in my mind? I'm, I'm trying to do God's will. I'm trying to obey his commandments as we read in the second reading. Am I in love with God? If we're in love with someone, we experience it. It's like, it's like consumes us. It's like we're immersed in this love for the other soul, the other person, the beloved. We just, we just can't get away from it. It's just totally consumes us if we're in love with someone. Uh, we experience it, we feel it, we're in them, right? We're in love, we're in love. We can't help but uh, ex experience it. So this is, we want to be in Jesus in this sense. We want to live in him. We're alive in baptism. If we haven't committed a mortal sin or if we're not in mortal sin, we're alive. But how alive are we? How much are we living in, in our Lord? We can, we want to come into the inner heart of the house, the heart of Jesus, by doing his will. All I have to do is do his will right now. And this is what we're talking about right now, not tomorrow, not later on in the day. I'll get to that later on. We want to be living in his will right now, doing what makes him happy right now. Of course, we are all doing what he wants us to do. We're here at Sunday Mass, right? This is where we're supposed to be on fulfilling the third commandment, to, uh, keeping the Lord's day holy. So we're, we know that, but are we in, are we, are we really at Mass? Are we really, you know, uh, uh, participating in the Mass? Are we really, you know, we really want to receive the Eucharist? Do we really want to be here with, in the company of Jesus, in the company of God and his family, loving our brothers and sisters? Or does somebody have to drag me here? Or am I just trying to get it out of the way? You know, I hope this is a quick Mass so I can, you know, get to real, real life you know, doing whatever I want to do for the rest of my day. No, we want, we want to be doing what God wants us to do for the rest of the day and every day. We want to be, that, that's life. That's really living. Really living is what God wants us to do throughout the day, every day. And we can discern that and find that out pretty easily. What we're supposed to be doing. Am I supposed to be 
uh, religious? Am I supposed to be at school? Or am I supposed to be taking care of a family? Am I supposed to be at work or whatever? Am I doing it well? Am I doing it the way God wants me to do it? Am I doing it to please God as an act of love for God? Am I in love for God? And I'm doing it out of love for God. If we're in love, we're in Jesus. If we're in his will, we're in Jesus. We're living in him as he's asking us to do. We're attached to the vine. We're doing what he wants us to do. And this is real life. And we, if we are in the will of God, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, if we're in love with God, in love with Jesus, we're going to bear much fruit. And it's not me that's going to bear fruit or you. It's going to be God who's going to be bearing it in us. All I have to do is be in love. All I have to do is be doing what he wants me to do uh, all the time. And so are we doing his will all the time? Probably not. You know, am I doing God's will all the time? Probably not. You know, should be. Um, I should be trying to, and I am trying to. You are trying to, I'm sure. But it's hard because we have our own will. We have our own cravings and desires and wishes and plans and, you know, we just, what, what I want to do, with the entertainments that I want to do, it's hard not to seek entertainments and desires. You know, of course, some of them are good. Some of them are what we should be doing. Uh, but even our entertainments, we have to direct them to the will of God, to what he wants us to do. And God's not a taskmaster. He's not a controlling uh, controlling master. Oh, you've got to, if you're going to be entertaining yourself, you've got to be doing exactly this, and you've got to step here and walk here and talk to this person in this way. You've got to control every single thing I do and say and look at and go and know. God's not like that. God's a, you know, a loving Father who wants us to be in the freedom of his, of his love freedom of the children of God. He wants us to be, you know, in general, in general, doing what he, trying to please him, and then, you know, be free. You know, if you're, as Saint, uh, Saint, as Saint Augustine says, uh, love God and then do whatever you want. You know, if we uh, set our sights on doing what pleases God, do whatever you want, because God will be with you, and you'll be with him. So, uh, this is what we want to, to do. And, and the, uh, the first reading is uh, mentions how to, how to uh, to uh, um, it was uh, the church was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with consolation with the consolation of the Holy Spirit it grew in numbers. You know another way of saying the same thing is f- living in the fear of the Lord, living in Jesus, living in the fear of the Lord, the beginning of wisdom, right? What is the fear of the Lord? It's a beautiful phrase. You know, what am I afraid of? I'm afraid to hurt the, my loving God. I'm afraid to hurt my father. I'm afraid to hurt my heavenly mother. I'm afraid to offend them. I'm afraid to displease them. I'm afraid to do anything that would hurt, hurt them. And that's, you know, a beautiful way to live, isn't it? And not, not fear in the sense of... Uh, I'm nervous, I'm afraid, you know, everything I do, I just want, don't want to make any mistakes. Don't want to make the smallest mistake or else God's going to be, you know, God's super sensitive. God's not super sensitive. He just wants us to do, you know, what we, what we can do, you know, in freedom, in joy, in peace, you know. Be afraid to offend God seriously or in a deliberate way, you know, it's as easy as that. You know, uh, do what we, what we, you know, live to please God uh, throughout the day as often as we can, as much as we can, as perfectly as we can, as often as we can, meaning all the time. Try to please God all the time. I mean, minute by minute, you know, uh, in a general way, with peace and joy, uh, not a stressful serving God, but trying to please him. And you're going to see, we, 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 we will see our life take off. We will see fruit being born left and right all around us, flowers everywhere, because God is doing it. You know, I'm just cooperating. I'm just letting him do it. I'm just uh, trying, to, you know, trying to, you know, put my plans out of the, out of the, out of the picture and let God work through me as a vessel as a transparent vessel, you know? Is that transparent, opaque? Is that the same, same meaning, opaque? I want to be like the shell, you know, God living totally. I mean, I, he can't even see me. 
I'm transparent and you can see God and you. Uh, we want to see God working and living in us, doing so many good things, so much good things, spreading, spreading his, uh, his kingdom everywhere around us, in the family, in the workplace, in our religious community, everywhere, doing God's will, trying to please him, uh, living in the fear of the Lord. Uh, you know, this is another way of saying it, be, you know, being in the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, in the kingdom of God. If you establish the kingdom of God, you will have everything else besides. Am I in the kingdom of God? And the kingdom of God is his will, doing what God wants us to do. And then we will have everything besides. Everything will fall in line. Everything will be fruitful. Won't always be easy. Won't, won't be free from suffering. But it will be at peace, knowing that we're doing what we should be doing pleasing God, and, uh, you know, we'll be happy. That, that, that's, that's how to be happy, happy today, now, and, and uh, hopefully I'm doing this at the end of my life. And uh, St. Maximilian says, you know, what a joy we will have at the end of our life if we look back and say, I, I've always done what God wanted me to do, and I've done it as perfectly as I can. We can all say that. We can all do that. Uh, just you have to, you know, Pray for that grace, keep striving to do that, and begging Our Lady to, to make it happen, to put me there, as St. Therese would say. I, you know, I, I wanted to reach, a, I had a dream of reaching a certain holiness in my life, and Our Lady put me there. Jesus just put me there. I didn't get myself there. It's like taking the elevator to the heights of the tower. Uh, and I got there by God's grace, by God's power. He put me there. I didn't get there. I didn't do it. God did it through my cooperation, through my desire. So uh, ask Our Lady to, to help us to get there, to put us there, and to make us persevere, really persevere. We don't win the prize till we've reached the finish line. So we ask Our Lady to help us to persevere there until that. <coughs>